If it's the summertime and you notice rooms that just don't get enough airflow that can't cool down like the rest of the house, or maybe you have a block home and the walls just seem to be emanating heat throughout the night and they can't get cool, it's probably not what you think or not what you're told. Maybe you've tried opening and closing your vents, maybe even adding extra insulation or an extra return to the room and you haven't had any luck. Over the past 10 years, we've done thousands of energy audits to find and fix exactly this problem. And it's not solved by a simple AC contractor coming out and telling you you need an extra return in the room or blowing maybe more insulation in the attic. These things actually need an energy audit done and these are the top reasons why we found hot rooms in homes. Check out our previous video to see common misconceptions, things that won't actually fix a hot room or won't actually lower your energy bills, but these sales guys will come to your house and tell you that this is going to fix everything, it's going to lower your bills by 30%, and it's just not true. I don't want to get into that today. Let's talk about why some rooms get hotter than others. And it really falls under four categories. The first category is probably the largest and the biggest culprit. It's going to be a bad duct design and or install. And this could include everything from the gamut of restrictive registers, kinks in the duct, wrong sizing of the ductwork, which is a dark horse cause of hot rooms, incorrect volume or velocity to the room, which is another elusive cause, or too many Y splits or branches in the ductwork. It could be from the insulation, and I'm not just talking about having 20 inches up in your attic, having just an insane amount of insulation. Misaligned insulation, or how the insulation is installed, is actually just as important as how much you have. And I'll show you some data on that in a second. And then sunstruck windows. Where I live in Arizona, we actually get more heat gain through our windows than we do our attics. And even though the attics can get up to 100 40, 150 degrees in the summertime, you'll have more heat gain coming in through sunstruck windows than the attic. And there's some actually some cheap fixes that you could do on a sunstruck window rather than replacing your window entirely. And then the last reason is uninsulated walls. So if you live in a block home built before 1980, the code was actually zero insulation in that block wall. And that's why you probably feel heat emanating off those walls in the nighttime. Yes, we do recommend insulating those block walls, but actually just putting some shade on it is going to take you about 80% of the way. So let's go into more detail on these things. Your duct design and the install, <laughs> probably the biggest culprit. We're talking everything from cheap builder grade restrictive registers, registers that hold back airflow and it's the cheapest thing the builder or the AC contractor more likely has on hand. They want to knock out, you know, 30 houses in a subdivision. They're going to buy the cheapest stuff. These are called stamp face registers. You want a high flow bar grill. That's going to allow more air into the room. One simple way that you can check yourself is just to take off the register. And if you notice the room get cooler because there's more volume of air going into the room, that's a sign that the register is holding too much air back and you need to change to a high flow grill. Kinks in the ductwork. This is an install fault. A lot of contractors switch to flex duct. This is the easiest kind of ductwork to install in homes, but because it's the easiest, the best practices go out the window and you know anyone can install it and the attic isn't something that we see every day AC contractors get away so much with bending the ducts making them double back and turn on themselves do hard kinks on the trusses yes that will restrict the airflow so if you had an 8 inch duct going into your room with a kink in it maybe it's acting more like a 6 inch duct and then we have the wrong size ductwork Yes, we will size ductwork based on what's called the manual D calculation. Especially in Arizona, our returns are notoriously undersized. So for a 5-ton system, you need to have at least a 20-inch duct to get enough volume of air into the unit so it can breathe easy. Especially homes with package units on the roof, those are notoriously undersized returns. And you may have a 5-ton system on your home but you're probably only getting four tons of air 
and that size needs to be increased. The next issue is an incorrect volume or velocity of air. These are two different things, but they have big impacts on your comfort. The velocity is more like your ceiling fan. If you run your ceiling fan, you, we get the feeling of comfort because air is passing over our skin. The volume is actually how much air is delivered into the room. And we've seen these things to be off, especially in bonus rooms above a garage. Those are notoriously hot. And in rooms that are the furthest away from the AC system. This is an, another downside of using flex duct is that instead of direct runs from the AC system in the attic, we have all these Y splits. Every Y split, it's like adding another 15 feet of extra length onto your duct system. So we've seen homes with five or six Ys before we ever get to a room. And that's like adding another 75 feet of duct length in your attic. Now let's get to our insulation. The codes for insulation have obviously increased and gotten better. The code for our hot, dry climate in Arizona is R30. Energy Star standard is R38. So I don't know why they don't increase the code, but it is getting better and has gotten better over time. But look at this graph. This graph shows that misaligned insulation or insulation that's installed wrong is just as harmful as having low insulation. So you could have a brand new home and if that insulation has only a 5% gap in it anywhere in the attic, that total R value is going to be decreased by half and fiberglass bats are going to be the number one culprit for this. So if you notice these pink panther fiberglass bats in the attic, I would be suspicious, maybe have a thermal camera scan done of the house checking for improperly installed insulation. If you look around your home, some of the red flags that we see are knee walls or arches, columns, any changes in ceiling height, that includes a vaulted ceiling. When we see these kinds of changes, we don't even need to go in the attic. A red flag goes off in our auditor's mind saying, you know, this could be installed wrong. It's something I'm definitely going to check for, and it's a mental note for him. Commonly along the perimeter of the house, insulation contractors, when they initially blow the insulation, will go light. I don't know if it's because they think that no one's going to check the work which no one typically does, or it could be from wind washing and baffles weren't installed along the perimeter of the house to direct the ventilation in the attic up along the roof deck rather than push the insulation back on the attic floor. Now let's get to sunstruck windows. If your window gets more than two hours of direct sunlight, we're going to recommend some type of shading. And yes, interior shading definitely helps. We verified that. But it's better and more effective if it's on the exterior of the house and it could be in the form of a shade screen but also a shade tree or any kind of cat's claw vine is going to do the same job a shade screen would if you don't want to sacrifice your daylight because that's the downside of shade screens then go with a clear window tint it's going to be better than your interior shades but not as good as exterior shades you do not need to replace your windows to get effective heat reduction through them. If you are replacing your windows, do it for aesthetics or soundproofing, but not just for cost savings alone because you'll never get your ROI on new windows. And then our last cause of hot rooms are uninsulated walls. And I'm not talking about the walls between your garage and the house. These are going to be insulated 100% of the time, even though the garage is not insulated and it does get super hot. I'm talking about more block masonry walls that are hollow on the inside. They have zero insulation in them. The R value is essentially one, and they retain the heat for much longer into the night by either shading the wall or injecting a foam core insulation you're going to have a much better insulated house and it's going to be most effective on the sunstruck walls. Those are our common causes of hot rooms. I've also got some flash fixes to help fix those hot rooms too. So make sure you change your filters. I know that sounds simple, but it's surprising how many calls we get and the AC is not working, it's clogged up and the filter is just filthy and it caused the compressor to overheat and reset itself. Keep your interior doors open. I think sometimes we get confused if you should have the doors open or closed. 
we want the doors open to allow good circulation of air into the room, but also out of the room is just as important. If you notice the door slams by itself when the air is on, or you see dust streaks on your carpet around the doors, that's a sign that you need to keep that door at least cracked so the air can escape and circulate out. Add shade screens or a shade tree to sunstruck windows. And then try running the fan mode on your thermostat more to circulate the air, especially on two-story homes in colder climates. This is really going to help. And then I'm going to recommend this, and some people may disagree, but on ranch-style homes, I say it's okay to close your registers, especially when they're above your doors on the wall. It's all on that same trunk system. And the restrictions or the static pressure on the supply side is really low enough where you can close those registers down without making your unit work harder. And by closing them down, you're going to redirect the airflow to the hot rooms that you need more air into. And then again, take off the registers in hot rooms, take them off completely and see if you notice more air if that room actually gets cooler because there is more air being delivered into the room. If so, you don't need to leave that register off permanently. Just find the same size in a high flow style. And then the last one is switch all your lights to LEDs. This is going to lower the heat gain that's in the house so the AC system doesn't have to work as hard to keep your house cool and comfortable. If you've tried any of these things, please let us know in the comments section. If you have any questions, I'm happy to help. And this is Dave Burns with Green ID wishing you happy savings.